Well guys, here I am at Winchester Station at the start of my long walk. I'm just waiting for my niece to arrive. She's been uh, she's going to be joining me on the walk, but unfortunately she's been a bit delayed, one thing and another. Sometimes train journeys go a bit peaked on. All part of the joys of the experience, so not to worry about. So yeah, as soon as she arrives, we'll be off doing our walk. Going like I said through the countryside, Salisbury, Glastonbury and the Bristol and all that. I'll be doing a bit of recording as I go and look forward to putting it up on the YouTube. See you in the main bit guys. Well guys, I've been walking for well I don't know what I've been walking for. Left Winchester about Half eleven, about half two now. So walking about two, three hours. And I've brought you to Farley Mount Monument. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you up to it, get you a bit close. But it's a monument to a racehorse. Back in the 1730s, the guy was out on his horse and they were out doing a bit of fox hunting perfectly legal back then and while they were out fox hunting fell down a 25 foot chalk pit and actually managed to survive next year the following year the owner and his horse actually went out and ran away race won a race try saying that after a few sherbet dib dabs <sighs> Should have gone up those steps, shouldn't I? Yeah, so they ran in a race, won it. He was called. Oh, there you go. Got a bit of information there. So you can feel free to pause and read it. Uh, the horse was called Beware Chalk Pit. Apparently buried underneath her. I mean, seriously, guys, look at that view. My niece Lauren down there checking out the trick point. Now there's a hobby in itself if you're interested in it, going out and taking photos of trick points. We're at Michaelmers, I think that's how I pronounce it, Michaelmers Church. Thought I'd do a bit of recording here because it's not often you see a church with a wooden tower. I just thought that was very, very interesting. I'm going to just take you around. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you inside in a sec because what it is inside there's a is it a pole bearer thing a trolley that used to carry coffins on I'm gonna shut the door you can have a look at this guys this is what they would have Put the coffin on, I would have thought, many centuries ago. Ooh. Nice big organ there. Just turn you around so you can see a bit of the rest of the inside. Like I said, I just thought I'd. Do a quick bit of recording for you guys because it's not usual you see a wooden tower. Oh, 
Well guys, end of day one. And this is where we're gonna be wild camping. Not far from Mottisfont, near the Abbey. Like I said, just a little bit of woodland. The main road nearby, so being a bit noisy, the cars, but they'll soon go away. Ah, so this is day one campsite. Looks like people are just going round. Yeah, I think they are, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, someone, there's a few footprints in there, someone attempted it. <laughs> just a random bit of bridge in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Someone, someone tries, didn't they? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think I'm going to go round that way, yeah. Yeah, but she wrote during his last years of poverty and isolation mm. in Paris. Loads of books. It's like a little mini library. Yes, isn't it? Sorry, I just don't want to put Oh, don't blame you. It's nice to see these telephone boxes still being used in a way. I could happily spend ages here just looking at the books. Yeah, absolutely. You've got some X files. Oh, X files, lovely. Oh. Look what I found, guys. Get up close. As close as I can. Look at that. It's a little fairy door. So if you ever wondered where the fairies live, this is it guys. Number 24. Some of them. Lovely little fairy door. Mm. Uh, proper fairy neighbourhood. More fairy doors. Definitely a lovely little fairy area. And another little fairy door, people. They're all around. Can hear a helicopter up ahead. Well guys, it's about just coming up to 3 p.m. on day two, and Lauren and I have got to Salisbury. And here we have Salisbury Cathedral. Now the cathedral, this one, if I remember rightly, it's got the tallest spire out of all the cathedrals in England. And this isn't the first cathedral for Salisbury. Because I don't know if any of you guys know, but where Salisbury is now, it's not the original site for the town for the settlement. This is New Salisbury or New Sarum. Old Sarum is just up the road and there used to be a cathedral there. And then it said, but I mean Old Sarum, population got too big for the area. It was a bit of a hill fort type place. So it got too big for the hill fort. So they had to move location and ended up down here. Now the story is, the cathedral at Old Sarum, Old Salisbury, I think, was it, I think the bishop or the abbot or somebody, some high up person in the cathedral at Old Sarum, had a bow and arrow, he said I'm going to fire an arrow, wherever it lands, I'm going to build a cathedral for the new city. 
fired his arrow. Arrow landed in the in a deer. Deer ran away and dropped dead here on on this spot. And this is why the cathedral for New Sarum, New Salisbury, got built here. So there you go guys. Quite a lot of figurines here. Like figures, sort of different people. Now, I don't know if the cathedral's open. I think I'll go and see if it is open. And if it is, do a bit of recording inside. Alright guys, this here is a ridgeway. We've about a mile or two, maybe a bit more outside of Salisbury, come up past Salisbury Racecourse, and we're now on this ridge right. And what it is, this would have been the main road between Salisbury and Shaftesbury, sort of many centuries ago. I mean, I said up until the mid late 19th century, the roads down in the valleys wouldn't have been. They were too boggy, not good enough for vehicles. Whereas up here on the ridgeway, where it was drier and not so boggy like the valleys, thought it was better for vehicles. So hence why this would have been the main road back in the day. It was even a, even a turnpike road at one point. But obviously as you can see now, it's just a track out in the wooded countryside. So we're going to be camping in these woods somewhere. Going to be camping down in a, within the next half hour or so. And then tomorrow we're going to carry on along this ridgeway and make our way into Shaftesbury, which will all be good. Yeah, so a nice old road. Well, this is day two wild camping site. Warren's setting a tarp up over there. I'm going to be sleeping over here. Last night I didn't bother putting the tent up, just slept in my sleeping bag. I think tonight I'm going to do the same. Not bother with the tent, just whack me sleeping tent, sleeping bag on the ground, and just sleep in that. I mean, a little bit of a road over there, but I mean, that's going to be quiet at night. Can't imagine many people coming along there during the night. Something else. Day number two, wild camp night site. Lovely bird song, lovely, peaceful, quiet area. It's gonna be good guys, gonna be good. Hi guys, a bit windy here. So it's about quarter past eight on day three. Been walking for about an hour, hour and a half already. And where I am at the moment, it's Chiselbury, it's a hell fort. So not sure how old it is. Might be, Bronze Age, might be Iron Age, I'm not sure. I've, I haven't double checked on the age of it, all the history. Sorry about that guys, so uh, can't tell you too much at the moment. I said quite a big area. I mean, pretty much just a bank and a ditch, as you can see. So, like, right on the top. So the ridge way that we're walking along, Sort of just over there. As you can see, like Bali just down over there. I mean, it's like so beautiful views around here. And you can see from miles and miles and miles. Lovely bird song. I'm quite happy the 
birds up here singing away. Molly's opening up a bit now down below us. Look at what I said. Quite a big ring. There's like, yeah, quite a big ring of earth, so massive area. Or temporarily, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what I said. See a bit more of the valley sort of down there now. A few clouds about. A bit of blue sky up there. Not too bad. Very windy at the moment, just on this little bit. Abandoned looking sort of buildings here guys. I think it's some kind of agricultural stuff. I think that'll be like silos for grain or something. Static caravan there, I'm pretty sure that's empty, so not much to it here. Not probably, not something I come to specifically on its own, but as I'm passing, I thought I'd do a quick video. Oh. That looks like it might have been cages for battery hands. Stuff them in there. I think that's what that looks like. Maybe that's what this part of what this was at one point. Maybe part of it was battery chicken farm. Looks like there's a doorway here to go into. I should have brought my torch with me, left that in the bag. Hopefully there's enough light, just about. Yeah, that's what this would have been. <laughs> Can't see much at the moment, but yeah, this would have been battery chickens. See all the crap on the floor. Might have been a good idea if I put my mask on first before coming in here. Didn't think of that. I don't know, can you... Can you get any kind of illness from walking through chicken poo? Ooh, ooh. I don't know, but... Oh. This is all sort of the feed bits and all the rest. Oh, coming back out. So, oh, a couple of... Don't know if I got them on camera. Oh, there they are. Pheasants. Right. Um, not too far now until we get to the Shaftesbury guys, just come up from there and we're going to be going on up there, as you can see Lauren's up there in the distance a little bit, we're just climbing through the countryside, quite a nice little footpath. Ah, lots of bird song as well. Very nice. Well, guys, we're in Shaftesbury now. So if 
just at the top by the town hall and I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to see a hill gold hill in Shaftesbury those of you of a certain age will remember the Hobis ad from the 1970s you remember the little boy on the bike pushing his bike up the hill to deliver the last loaf of bread and then he got to free will down the hill at the end and it had that sort of bit of classical music to it and the old guy's voice in the race in it well that hill in the Hobus had from the 70s was this hill, Gold Hill look at that, isn't that impressive so guys Next time you watch the Hobbit ad, the 1970s one, you can watch it on YouTube. This is the hill that appeared in it. I mean, what a beautiful view! Beautiful hill and beautiful hill in the back, view in the background. So imagine living here on one of these uh, houses. Pretty nifty house to live in, but a bit of a steep old hill to live on. As you can see, wouldn't want to cycle up here. Not sure I'd want to cycle down here. There you have it, guys. Gold Hill, Shaftesbury. Made famous by the Hobbit's Hat. It's the morning of day four, it's about ten to nine now, and just walking past an old water mill, as you can see out in open countryside. That's his Stam Provost, I think that's how you pronounce it, and that's a Stam Provost mill. bit of a write-up about it. It was in the area when the Doomsday book was written. This is this mill here and it was recorded 1570, 1640, 1747. Present mill was made in 1886 and used for 60 years and then restored in 1988. There, as you can see, just in there, quite nice but very beautiful area, look at it. Uh, be a lovely place to live. Like I said, Star and Provost area this is. Alright guys, end of day four today and as you can see got my tent up tonight. So last night it rained during the night. I kind of regretted not having my tent up. So today I thought I'm gonna have my tent tonight. Especially considering the fact that during the morning this morning it was quite a wet morning as well. So I thought don't want to risk it. Gonna have the tent. So if it does rain tonight, I'm gonna to stay nice and dry. Now I'm on my own tonight. Lauren's gone home. About earlier on this uh, this afternoon, just round about tea time, we got to Castle Carey Station. Um, that's when Lauren had to sort of bail on the walk. She wanted to get home sort of the weekend, which is fair enough. Uh, so she's got the train home from Castle Carey. And I'm going to carry on the journey myself. What well, my destination is going to be Glastonbury. So all being well, I should get to Glastonbury tomorrow. I reckon I'll hopefully do it. And when I get there, be doing a bit more recording. That'll be the end of me walk. And then what I'll do is I'll get a bus into Bristol, probably do a bit of recording in Bristol, and get the train back home. Now I realise I haven't been doing a lot of recording so far, obviously with wild camping and all the rest. Limited opportunity to keep my phone sort of topped up. So I don't want to do too much recording because I don't want to drain the battery too quickly. 
I run out of battery, you know, oh, that's it. I can't use my phone, can't text my wife to let her know I'm all, all right and safe and all the rest. So lots of stuff I could wish I could have been able to record that I haven't been able to use or all the rest. But anyway, that's enough of me jabbering on. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to call it an end to this little bit. And I'll see you in the morning. Well, guys, just there where I'm pointing to, that's Glastonbury Tour in the distance. I'm about four or five miles away from it now, so another two, two and a half, maybe three hours of walking. And I'll be at Glastonbury and taking you up to the tour. So, almost there. I'll also do a bit of recording of the Chalice Wells as well, if I can get to it. Glastonbury Abbey, I doubt I'll be able to get into that, but I should be able to get into the car park and get a bit of the Abbey from over the car park wall. Do what I can. So yeah, well, that's where we're heading for. Getting a bit closer now guys, almost there, soon be up the tour, soon be there. I'm going to just take you into the Chalice Pool and Gardens area. Now, it's a place of quiet and sort of silence and sort of solitude and where you can meditate and all that kind of thing. So I'm not going to be doing any talking because there's going to be a few other people I know I expect. And I said, because it's supposed to be a place of silence and reflection. I don't want to disturb anyone's peace. So what I'm going to do is, I've got a little guy here, I'm going to, get to the Vesica pool, do a bit of recording there hopefully and also do a bit of recording at the King Arthur's Court and Healing Pool and also get a bit of the lion's head, sort of where the water's coming out and then also finally, well, what's the last bit I'm going to go to? I also want to get to the well head, sort of the head like Chalice well head, the head of the well. So three little areas I'm going to record in. Like I said, not going to be doing any talking really because 
it's supposed to be a place of silence and officially not like mobiles either so a bit cheeky me recording in there but anyway that's why I'm getting silent Well guys, that's the end of the walk, got the glass and bring. I'm now on a bus going to Bristol, so <laughs> gonna be a bit of a shaky outro here. So just saying, yeah, lovely long walk. Like today been by myself, but most of it with Lauren, so thank you Lauren for joining me, it's been lovely having you. And guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching what the bits I have recorded. Not a lot, I know, but anyway, a few little bits. I hope it was good enough. I might do a little bit of bonus recording at Bristol as a as a tandem up at the College Green. I haven't decided yet. That's how it goes. I might just jump on a train straight home from Bristol. So it depends what mood I'm in when I get bus gets to the station. But whatever I do, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, guys, the usual: stay safe, take care, God bless.